Like in a big joke. Ow! <laughs> I've gone insane. Ooh, I just did something really stupid and this is terrifying. Me, no likey. I've always been a bit of a wimp. Cheeky little sniff. It can't go big boom. Frankenstein of a thing. Oh, it smells. Gone. This video is the second in a series, so if you didn't see my first video on battery management systems or if you don't know how they work, I recommend you watch that one first. In this video we'll turn the theory into practice with a real battery management system. I bought this on eBay, comes from Hong Kong, cost me £6.90. So now we need some batteries. So this is your typical laptop battery and of course I need to get the batteries out. There you go. Now the cells. I haven't punctured anything, but you can see how little space there was when I was coming in here to get it open. But anyway, here are the, the batteries. That's going to be the thermistor there, which measures the temperature. And we'll shut down the battery if it gets too hot. This is the control circuit board covered in caps on tape won't be using it I'm going to cut this down here put that over there cut this these are all connected together anyway down here now these are obviously paralleled I'm going to, I want to split them in two I don't know if I can do that without I don't want to puncture the casing of course Ooh! did you see that heat up? The scissors just glowed hot. And I realised that when I stuck the scissors in here to cut through here, I was connecting the end here with the side with the end of, of the batteries with the case of the batteries. And I guess the case is connected to this end. So I was effectively shorting out this end with this end. So it's like connecting this to this. So I'm not experienced in dealing with these and, and I just came unstuck there. This is terrifying. It means that that strap, the only thing stopping it touching this case is this piece of paper. And if we look under this piece of paper, which is lacquered in some way, okay, the, the insulation. So this is my pointy thing. Where am I? This is the positive end. This is the negative end. But the negative end extends is is the case so we must not touch this thing here to the case well, I just finished using the the old sky debris to um, get these all to the same voltage they're all at 4.21 except for that one which is at 4.19 which we're going to go with Here's the circuit diagram we'll be using. The seven cells in series give a nominal voltage of 24, though it ranges up to 29.4 when everything's fully charged. The battery pack is unconditionally protected by a fuse, so no massive current can flow in or out. This one's 20 amps. Both the load and the charger are connected directly, although via the fuse, to the positive side of the battery pack. But the negative sides of the load and the charger are connected to the BMS and not to the battery pack. So this gives the, the battery management system ultimate control over what current flows through the load and what current flows from the charger. And of course it's this control that allows the BMS to manage the system. It can prevent overcharging, over discharging um, and it can control the maximum current flow. I'm ready to um discharge the pack somewhat and the only load I've got that can uh, run from 30 volts is uh, two PC fans in series so we're running Ooh. <laughs> ow 
Yeah, they're spinning round, mate. They'll um, they'll keep. They'll do that. You find that. Okay, so now I've got to periodically monitor the voltage of this system. It's uh, just check anything's nothing's getting warm. I'm wondering what current's going through. Well, this was taking rather a long time, which I suppose is testimony to just how much energy these batteries can store. I come from the days of EverReady U2 zinc carbon batteries, and these are just uh, monsters. So I've had a rethink, um, as well as the fans and the uh, electric motor. I've now made this thing a Frankenstein of a thing. It is a 1 ohm 10 watt resistor and some length of nichrome wire wound around here and it has about a 15 ohm resistance and then what I've got is this clip so I can attach it when I want to put this in the circuit in parallel with the other loads the 1 ohm resistor has got this voltmeter across it and so when I um, connect the load into the circuit um, the voltage dropped will be the same as the amps flowing so um, I think we should get about 1.7 or something like that amps, which is 1.7 volts. Let's let's put that on. 1.43 amp. I now know that the green voltmeter for some reason reads 0.2 of a volt low, so the estimate was far closer than it uh, appears to be. Well, the discharge continues. 24.4 volts, 1.3 amps or thereabouts. Everything's cool as in not hot. Um, I've rearranged the heat sink so that the, there's a block at each end and the air can get underneath as well as on top. Um, and I'm just leaving it to grind its way down. It, it really is astonishing how much energy these things contain. Anyway, keep on trucking. We're looking for it to cut out around 21 volts. 22.5 gone stopped so the over discharge protection kicked in at 22 and a half volts which is 3.21 volts per cell and that's really a long way away from the advertised 3.0 volts plus or minus 0.1 of a volt um, which was advertised in the seller's description hmm it's a mystery anyway the video is getting a bit long so I'll end it there um, but today we've seen how a real battery management system is hooked up um, as compared to the theory we did last time also done some battery salvage from laptop batteries and seeing the safety issues there uh, we've used the battery manager to um, discharge a battery pack and seen that it shuts off a bit early next time we'll hopefully have solved that problem by the way if you have any ideas feel free to comment um, and we'll also look at the other aspects of the battery management system see how they all work out deliver an overall verdict on the battery manager that I bought um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you'll um, subscribe to see the next one Alright, thanks for watching.